Tanya, it's so good to see you. But I was talking to Rob about wins and I can't believe that in what, nearly a year since his jab injury? When was he injured? June. Oh, he, no, so November. Yeah, right, but he had his first jab in June and then he had all that anxiety that came up. So I count that as injured because he wasn't the Rob you knew before. And then the terrible, the terrible shaking started in November. But it's a year since he had his first jab and this government has not come through. Even with this heightened anxiety and the kind of depression he was going, nothing. And then when he got major, major injury, absolutely nothing. And here we are and nothing's coming through. Tell me about wins. They wouldn't try to put Rob on a job seeker benefit, would they? They wouldn't do that to someone injured like this, surely. What's mm. your feeling? You'd think they wouldn't. I want to front foot it. What would you do if they even thought of putting him on a job seeker? What would you say oh, to that? I would, yeah, I would, I would probably march down to the wins office and physically speak to someone have my husband come with me and say you want him to get a job he had a job he, he was working he didn't leave his job it's because of his because of his health why he can't work and if they were to put him on a job seeker oh I'd probably do a big nana and have a big fit if in you, the wind's office. If you do, I'd like to join you and I'll be having a big nana as well. And we will do that on camera because that would be so unethical and so lacking in compassion that I can't even get my head around that possibility. But I know that you guys are yeah. worried a bit about that. So what he needs is a full sickness benefit. Isn't it? He needs they don't do sickness benefit anymore. Everything comes under job seeker. Everything. That, so everything comes under job seeker, um, or yeah, like the sickness benefit. Everything comes under job seeker. But we're currently applying for supported living. What he is applying for supported living, I can't apply for that because I'm his wife. I come, I come under him. So he he is he's the man of this house. I'm his wife. I just fall under him so he now applies for the supported living not a sickness because then that's job seeker it's kind of a little I it's still... extremely confusing but what gets me is this government asked a lot of Kiwis who have now been injured they asked them they coerced them they forced them if they wanted to keep their jobs to have this jab and this government had no plans for people who would be injured who like Rob could not work who then would be worrying about how they survive, how they keep a roof over their families' heads. It is so beyond inhumane. Mm. I still cannot believe we have a government this cruel. Would you keep me in touch with what happens with the, with the WINS office? And I'd love to come down and with a camera anytime and ask those people you're having to deal with if they would do an on-camera interview with us, just so Kiwis can know whether they are choosing compassion or brutality. So would you do that for me, Tanya? Yeah, I don't want to be a bother for you, but I would do I that. would love to do that. And I have asked Kiwis to keep helping you guys with money because we have kept a roof over your head all together, all of us together, all Kiwis who care. And I'm so appreciative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank everyone. Do you want to like Rob say a quick message down the camera just yeah. to those Kiwis? Um, I am just extremely grateful, humbled um, by all the koha donations. Um, thank you so much to each and every one of you that um, gave to um, my husband and myself, our household, our family, na mahi nui. Because when I came to see you, you did not have enough to survive with a roof over your head to pay rent. Mm. And you looked so stressed and worried. So at least now, this generosity has taken that stress off for now, but you need government help ongoing. The second thing I wanted to ask you about, Tanya, was what Rob was like when he came back from Wellington. We've heard from him how traumatizing it was but how brave aren't mm. you proud of him i'm very proud fancy going up and down that line i'm was um i i as a wife i wanted to look after him and protect him and i thought no you can't go to wellington mm. 
But um, I knew he had to. I knew it was something that he had to do. He's quite stubborn too. <laughs> um, so yeah, but when he did, when he returned, he it was he was a little bit, um, I don't know, yeah, traumatized, but sombre, like about everything that had happened. I think it was um, like he just it was a surreal moment for me. Just couldn't believe what he witnessed. Yeah, so I'm. Um, Glad that I wasn't there. I, I wish I was there, but after hearing the stories, I, I know that I uh, it would have been hard for him to. He would have been wanting to protect me, <laughs> you know, and yeah. But um. And there he was on that front line, not even caring in a way what yeah. happened to him, trying to protect all of those protesters, those peaceful people. Mm. What an amazing! Aren't you proud of your? Husband? I'm so proud. Yeah, I'm. Um, astonished at what went down. I mean, the police are supposed to protect us, you know, help serve the community, not attack the community. Yeah. Would you have a message to the head of the police? Is there something as a wahine, as, as a, one of the women of New Zealand? What do you think of a police head who would order that sort of behaviour? Oh, I think it's appalling. I... My... Um, I don't trust the police anymore. Um, I, the, any respect I had for the police is little if nothing. Um, I just, I can't believe what really went down that day. It's just shocking. It's sad. It's really sad. Really sad. And um, I, if, I, if I was out in, in the community and, and something happened and I needed the police to help or help the situation. I don't know if they would even turn up or if they would do be any good. I don't trust them. I passed a policeman on the road the other day and my first thought with all of them in uniform now is, were you one of those ones? Yeah. Were you there? Did you do that to Kiwis? And another girlfriend said to me, she can't even look at a police car without shuddering. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the women particularly are going, that, that brutality, that's not the New Zealand we want for our children, ever. Yeah. That was just terrible behaviour. And that um, it actually reminds me about, um, I remember now when uh, we went down, when my husband and I went down to uh, Wellington for the Silence No More petition, um, be, uh, because we marched from uh, Civic Square, to Parliament and um, it was a silent march and when we got close to Parliament I remember now um, there were two policewomen um, standing there on this monument I, I, I'm not familiar with Wellington so and um, they had these big cameras <laughs> and they were taking photos but I don't know what that was about like I don't know why they needed to take photos of us and then it makes me think are they wanting to take photos of all of our faces just to keep on file? I don't know. I mean, why would the police want to take photos of us? It's like something you'd hear out of communist Russia in, in the worst days of communism. Oh, that's yeah. like something you'd think, oh, that's KGB secret police yeah. stuff. That's ugly. Was, I just they need to be held accountable for that. Tell us about that silent no more because I saw images of you and Rob there. Yeah. And this is organised by Casey's yes. wonderful mum, Anna yes. Hodgkinson. No, she's isn't she lovely, special? Awesome. Yeah. I got to meet her and her beautiful daughter yeah. um, and her daughter's partner. Um, yes, and no, the whole experience, it, it was it was really, it, it was good. It was good to be there. Um, it was sad. Um, because silent no more means the people who have been jab injured will be silent no more. They will speak up and they will let Kiwis know yes. they won't stay in their homes by themselves suffering. Yes. So anyone who wants to join, look up Silent No More on Facebook and join them on their website. It's a yeah. beautiful image of a bird, not with the arrow through the heart. Mm. It's, it's got a broken wing, but it's a, yeah. a wing can I heal. should have put my t-shirt on. <laughs> yeah, it would have been nice. um, But yeah, uh, it was uh, 58,000, that's the number on the back of the 58,000 plus, um, the number of people affected by the vac vaccination that was on the back of the t-shirt. So I was like, I was surprised. I didn't know it was that much. And it and will that, be even more now because that was be a month ago. Yes, yes. 
And um, what was it like as you silently marched through Wellington? Did people respect? Did they show their respects? Um, majority did. There were a few that you could just see the look on their face because the protests at Wellington were still fresh. And um, some people look disgusted in us and my god and people in wheelchairs jab injured yeah. this is the effect of of false propaganda of lies in the media of lies from the police of lies from the government yeah. people must wake up and go that doesn't make sense these are gentle souls yes. and people in wheelchairs mm. what is the government telling me it's not the truth these are gentle people yeah. who are hurt um when we got to Parliament, because uh, things happened, uh, changed. Um, we, we were going to go into the grounds, but then Millard did something and we had to go by the stairs. So I'm not Trevor familiar. Millard? Yes. He Yet again? Did, uh, things changed. The, the plan changed. Yeah, the plan changed from going, taking the petition that Anna and Casey had worked so hard with. We were going to take that petition into the grounds, but something happened and it changed. So we had to go on the other side by the stairs. So we just all congregated by the stairs. And... Um, Honestly, that man Mallard, I just pray that he never is in Parliament again after this next oh, election. Yeah. What How an do we appalling get him out? human being. <laughs> what an appalling human being. He's this is the man who wet all the campus tents yeah. when a huge storm was coming through. This is the man who played loud music and possibly even sonar weapons that caused burns and skin issues. And this is the man who stopped the, the jab injured, mm. being able to present a petition asking the government to show compassion to the jab injured. What is wrong with Trevor Mallard? He's childish. No, he's, he's, he's worse than that. That is black. That is elite. He's ugly, but uh, ugly inside. Ugly inside. <laughs> so you went to the other steps. Yeah, and then um, we waited for an, an MP to come out to accept the petition. And that's what I was saying to my husband because um, in that moment, I my heart just felt for all those that were there at the protest, at that major protest. So they all went to the protest day after day wanting an MP, or Jacinda, or anybody from the government to come out and nobody ever did. And then we went down to um, the silent, silence no more and um, and an e MP came out. So when he came out and accepted the petition, I just really felt for all those people that never saw an MP and here I am coming down and I see an MP and it just, I just felt sorry for all those people that didn't get to see that. Even though it's a diff he was coming to accept a petition, but still he's an MP and he came out to us. That didn't happen at that, at that protest. You've, it's the truth. MPs are meant to represent us, mm. are meant to listen to us, are meant to hear us when we cry out. Mm. They are our servants. Yeah. Gosh, Tanya. And what, was, what, what were the other highlights of that day? So you did manage to get somebody. Can you yeah. remember the MP's name? Oh, we can um, find out. It, it, um, wasn't, it wasn't a senior MP, I remember no. that, but at least somebody came. We will find, if you send us that image, we'll put it up on screen. Pink or, no, oh, sorry, yeah, mm. I can't remember. But he's an MP for North Shore. MP for North Shore, we'll find out yeah. his name. And credit to him for coming. Mm. I wish he had come out to speak to the village. What else, what else was it about that day that was healing? Oh, just meeting people mm. and listening to their stories and, um, how the vaccine had affected their lives and their 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 health after the vaccination and yeah hanging out with um Casey and um and her mum um yeah it was it was a real special moment um and it, because my husband um is dealing with what he's dealing with and he shakes a lot um, to see Casey, I, I, oh, my heart just went out to her, and um, it was just nice to hang out with her, and and I just treated her like normal, like I, 
like I, I saw her for her and and spoke to her, she spoke to me, but still with her um, shaking. Yeah, I don't know, I see my husband shaking, I see her shaking, I just, uh, I'm sad and it's really, it's not fair, it's, not, it's just not fair. How are you coping with it all these months later, Tanya? How, how, how does it feel day in, day out? Oh, I, I've really had my moments because, um, yeah, it's, oh, it's, sorry, um, you think that, you think that, um, you, you, you're okay, but it's, a, um, it's like a, um, like you deal with a lot of grief, um, because it was really hard, I think, because, um, so I had that happening with my husband, and then, um, they mandated the booster at my job and I lost my job just like everybody else I'm not the only one that lost a job like I understand that and I don't feel sorry for myself and I know I'm I'm just like a lot of people out there that lost their job because of, because of the mandates um but then um, our youngest daughter she um, she had to have surgery on her hip so um, she had a slipped hip um, the short version is super, but that's what they say. I can't remember the medical terms, but it's a her hip had slipped about that far, so they put it into place and screw it again. Um, so we were in hospital for like nearly a month. So I was in there with her, and our other children were here looking after my husband. Um, but during that time, I was organizing my handover so um, yeah I remember the day of Nadia's surgery my boss rang me that that morning because I had to meet with him and have a zoom to give my handover and um, did he know Nadia was having he, surgery he knew that we were in hospital but he didn't know until he rang me that morning and when, and when he rang I told him Oh, Nadia is going to have her surgery today and at the time that he called because um, she, she was bedridden so she was on, on the bed from the time she fell in this house right up until uh, a week after her surgery she had been in a bed she's bedridden so um, she was in a bit of pain and um, she was screaming and I was on the phone with my manager and he was like oh um is that, is that your daughter? Do you need to go? <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah, can I call you back? Like, I need to do my daughter and help her. And But a lot of stress of dealing with, um, like, I understand. So, so I know I lost my job because of the, the not taking the booster. It's just I, I thought maybe we could have organised all of that handover after I had left the hospital. It was a lot to deal with being in the hospital, thinking about my husband at home, about our household, and then my daughter having surgery and losing my job all in that week. That must have been absolute hell. It was really hard. Tanya, that's incredible. And, and this guy who, who said you had to leave work because of the booster, you'd had the other shots. I had the, I was, I, I had the two vaccinations and I took the vaccinations. I was the last one in our office because I, I, I did not want the vaccination. I really um, believed, I believed that if I was to get COVID, I knew that it wouldn't kill me. I knew it wouldn't take me out. So knowing that I wouldn't die from COVID, I, I just, trusted my own immunity and I knew that I didn't need that vaccination but I took the vaccination because it was mandated and if I didn't I would have lost my income. So I took the vaccinations, two shots for my job, for my... Which is what the Prime Minister said, two shots and then you're done. Two shots and you can have summer, two shots and you can go to the pools, two shots and you can go to the movies, two shots you keep your job. So I did that, but then when they mandated the booster, I was not going to have that. I mean, 
when they started talking about the booster, I heard people saying that there's going to be a fourth booster. Like, how many boosters are we going to have to take? I was not prepared to just have injection after injection. I did the two vaccinations, thinking that's all it would... And I got a vaccination pass. And and um, even though that vaccination pass expires this May, the vaccination inside my body is not expired. I've still got that in my system, but my vaccination pass has expired. And what right does your boss have to say you must have the booster? You're still on the on the other passport. Do you ha do you want to say his name or the or the job? I don't know if I should. It's up to you. There, there are. Um, I'll say that there a non-profit Maori Kopapa health provider. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. He should be ashamed of himself. And look at your loyalty. And do you know who else was loyal like this in an interview? To the very person who ordered her to have the jab that injured her? Casey. Mm -hmm. Casey, when, when we spoke to her, wouldn't tell us the, the name of her boss. That's how loyal Kiwis are. And these bosses are not being loyal and not looking after you. He should be absolutely horrified at himself for, for allowing you to go through all that stress that week. Is Nadia getting better? Is your daughter getting oh, better? Oh, she's, she's on the mend. She has um, an appointment at the super clinic this week. Um, but yeah, that was interesting too because, um, I don't know if you want to know this, but um, when we went into um, to the hospital, she was taken in there by the ambulance um, and then we went into kids first and then when they diagnosed her and told me what she'll need to have done, surgery and all of that, um, I don't know why but um, they asked me if I had any questions and I was like, oh yes. I was like, and I don't know why I thought of this but um, I said to them, if anything was to go wrong in surgery and she needed blood, can you tell me that that blood will come from a non-vaccinated person or would it come from a vaccinated person? Wow. Mm. And what was the reply? Oh, uh, um, oh, oh, uh, wow. they didn't, they couldn't answer. Which was, because I said to them, I said, no way while Nadia is here in hospital are you going to vaccinate her. She is not having the vaccination. And then, and then I, and that's when I thought, if if she if if something went wrong and she needed blood, I didn't want the blood to be vaccinated blood. You know what I'm saying? Like I was saying to someone the other day, a really smart business person, man or woman, who wanted to make a lot of money right now, would have would would be starting up a blood bank for non-vaccinated blood. It will be really sought after. There is no doubt in my mind. So, so it's absolutely I want blood. <laughs> a brilliant, <laughs> a brilliant question. It's yeah. a brilliant question and you've got no real reply. No real reply. Tanya, you're such a powerful wahine. Can you keep going and with some help from all of us, from Kiwis who want to help you, love you and Rob, can you keep going now? Can you keep that your spirits up enough to just know that each day I'll get through today it will get better. Do you say that to yourself? I do. I, I do. Um, I'm at peace. I'm still, I'm happy. I mean, yeah, we went through all of that. And at the time I cried a lot of tears and, and then there were emotions of anger, but I'm still alive. And um, my husband is still alive, thank the Lord. And we have a roof over our head I am happy, I'm at peace. And every now and again when I I think about my old job and about the time when Nadi was in hospital and all of that, it does get me a little bit upset, but I mean, you just gotta soldier on and move on and think of the future, and, yeah. You've still got one of the finest men in New Zealand as your oh, husband too. He is a good man. He is a good man and, and um, yeah, I mean, he he's, he's a good man. He's always been a good man. Even now with his health, he's still, he's the man. Yeah, he's the man. I won't let him have a Harley though, but he's the man. <laughs> <laughs> he can't wait there. <laughs> Thank you, Tanya. Thank you.